everyone. Um, my name is Vivek. I am a security architect with Cisco, and I'm going to here to talk about um, a new feature in NextGen Firewall called Dynamic Objects and Attribute-Based Policies. So today, we have the ability in our NextGen Firewalls, FMC, and FTDs to modify objects using API. That feature has existed for a while now. But there are challenges in modifying what we what is basically static objects. Challenge being, if you needed to change the mappings of an object in real time, you would not be able to do that. Because today, the objects and APIs require us to um, change the objects and then push the objects at a, a policy down to each FTD. And as everybody probably knows is pushing FTD policies or FMC policies to FTD is a time-taking process. It can take a few minutes and uh, in some cases even drop traffic. So in today's world where you have uh, dynamic workloads, you have uh, workloads in Azure or AWS or even via private cloud uh, spinning up and down from an auto scale perspective, as soon as load increases, you start pulling up a new workload and as the workload decreases, you uh, drop down the workload. In such environments, Trying to change objects, static objects, and then pushing them down to the FTDs or uh, to enforce is really not the best way to go about it because you're going to drop traffic. You can take about five, seven minutes to um, make all the changes. So today's environment requires something new. Something uh, so that's why we introduce what's called dynamic objects. Now dynamic objects in FMC are very similar to current static objects with one huge difference. These objects are blank. They can be created using the UI or an API. This is an API first feature, by the way. Once the object is created, you can assign that to a policy and push the policy down to FTD. Now, you can use APIs to modify what's inside the objects, the IP mappings, the subnet mappings. You can use APIs to add or delete those mappings. And that would be pushed down to FTD in real time without requiring a policy push. So. Um, what are the key use cases for these features when it, uh, you know, when we come to it? First, of course, the main use case is the ability to push IP addresses of workloads in various cloud environments into the FTD uh, directly as soon as it comes up. So imagine there's an HR application that just come up, this huge load, first day, uh, payroll day, and suddenly the DevOps that team had to increase the workload. So auto scale and kicked in. We added another 100 workloads for the HR application to handle the uh, new load coming in. So as soon as these 100 workloads come up one after the other, we need the ability to feed into the firewall that's preventing traffic coming in to that environment and tell the firewall that these new 100 IP addresses are essentially the HR applications and they need the HR application uh, permits, right? So permissions. So that's the key use case that we had in mind as we designed this feature. But there are some additional use cases that um, we also see this being helpful with, right? First is if you have a list of uh, devices in CMDB, you want to keep it synced with objects and your policies, you could write a small code to fetch information from CMDB and push it into your uh, FMC and FTD in real time. If uh, another use case with SecOps is, uh, if you needed to quickly add IP addresses to a certain blacklist or whitelist object being used in your policies, then this API first feature could be very, very useful where um, you, your SecOps team could just enter an IP address, send a push on a portal or somewhere, and that IP address gets added to the uh, right object in FTD FMC and immediately gets uh, implemented. So, Few things. Uh, this is what we envision uh, dynamic objects being used. We spoke briefly about it. The firewall resides somewhere between your private cloud and your public cloud with VPN tunnels going uh, to your multiple public clouds. You have your FTD FMC sitting in your data center. You have uh, some sort of a connector. We talk about the connector in a bit that connects to AWS, VMware, or whatever cloud environment you're talking to and fetches metadata in real time and then converts that metadata into tags and IP addresses and pushes them into FMC in real time again. So as soon as workload changes on your public cloud or your private cloud, the firewall policies would immediately change to reflect that because you would have a dynamic object sitting there and you're pushing into the dynamic object. Now, uh, Cisco is definitely coming out with an initial connector of sorts with uh, 
adapters and connectors for some of the common public environments. The way this would work, again, all of this is public beta right now uh, going into uh, FCS pretty soon. But this connector called the Cisco Secure Dynamic Attributes Connector would allow you to connect to AWS, Azure, or various other commonly used public environments. But we also want to show you in today's uh, demo how to use this API, how to connect to an environment that may not have a connector from Cisco, or maybe you have a different use case altogether, and how you could um, use the APIs for these connectors. So this demo is recorded on an FMC 7.0. And uh, the new feature called Dynamic Objects is added to the Objects uh, section here under External Attributes. So this is where you could create the Dynamic Objects using the Add Object, uh, Dynamic Object button that I'm showing you on the screen. And uh, for this demo, we have pre-created the production server's uh, Dynamic Object. It has no IP addresses mapped to it right now. You could also create objects using APIs. But here it's easier to just create the object using the UI. Now, once the object is created, you can insert that into a policy and you push the policy down. So here's the concept of static policies with dynamic objects. It reduces the amount of firewall changes you require. You don't need a ticket every weekend. You don't need to keep adding policies and IP addresses to policies every weekend. Uh, the concept is you write a policy once and then you define the policy using dynamic objects, and you manipulate or change the dynamic objects as you have a need, and all of that happens in real time. So here you can see I'm using the production server dynamic object in a policy that has been pushed to my FTD. Obviously, I preset all of this up for this demo to save us some time, but um, essentially, yes, I pre-created a policy with a dynamic object called production servers in the destination. So anything that's any IP that is in the dynamic object production servers will be allowed to go through. Everything else, the default policy is blocked, so the traffic will be blocked. So with that, once the policy is done on the FTD, we are ready to go. Now, as you probably know, if there is an API in FMC for something, then you can access the information about that API in what we call the API Explorer in FMC. What I'm showing you on the left-hand side of your screen is is the API Explorer. I'm scrolling down to find the APIs added for the dynamic objects. So here you could see um, this is the most common, most simplest API for dynamic object that just gives me a list of dynamic objects in FMC. Here I have Postman. I chose not to write a code and show you, but rather show you how the APIs work in Postman. For somebody who's not familiar with Postman and who's new to APIs, new to DevNet, Postman is um, the most common software we application we use to essentially test APIs and you know uh, find out what's really going on when we are trying to code something. We test the APIs first using Postman and then you know, write a code. So here are a few things you need to know. Um, I obviously preset everything. FMC requires an uh, access token, so I already got the access token up by running the um, get FMC token and domain. Uh, object that I had or API call that I had. Now all the environment variables have been filled up because I'm using the FMC environment that I created. So the FMC IP, the domain ID, the uh, dynamic object name, and all the XORT access tokens have been pre-filled when I ran the post query. So now I'm showing you when I'm going to run a simple dynamic object query out. Everything has been pre-filled, as I mentioned, all the variables. You just go and grab the dynamic objects. It shows the same query as from the API, of the API Explorer. Here is a list of dynamic objects that exist in FMC today, very, uh, very similar to what you saw on the UI. The production server's uh, object is already there. Now, the next API I want to show you uh, that got added as part of this feature was just to grab mappings from an um, existing object. So if there's an object, we want to grab how many IPs are there. Here you would see there are no mappings, no IP addresses in um, production servers object. Here I'm going to start a ping real quick to my Azure workload. And notice the IP address. It is 192.168.20.132. This is the IP address will push into the dynamic object, and you will see how quickly the impact happens on FTD and how the traffic starts flowing. So the ping is denied right now. 
let's find the API to add a mapping. Uh, since we are adding or changing an existing object in a REST server, we are going to use a put call here, right? So get to get information, put to make changes to an existing object. And uh, the way this API was designed, you would still use the uh, mappings API that we are using to get information, but you'll action, you'll add a parameter called action with a value called add when you have to try to add a mapping to a particular uh, object. So I'm going to use this call. And I'm going to put it here. And this API call expects the mappings in the body uh, in a JSON format with mappings and the, uh, the values. So I'm adding two IP addresses here. One is 2132 for my Azure workload, which I have a ping running to at the back, uh, background in the uh, terminal window. And then 30.133 is my Azure workload. I'm adding that also with this API call. So notice as soon as the push is sent, you'll start seeing pings fly through. There on the bottom, you see the pings come through. So a couple of things. One, that shows you we use an API, we pushed in mapping into an object, that got pushed into FM, FTD almost immediately. So you'd see within less than a second of actually pushing the IP addresses, the FTD started using those IP addresses and now it started allowing the traffic to go through. So this is really fast. The whole process between FMC and FTD is really, really fast and which is perfect for workload changes. So in practical real terms, as soon as the Azure workload came up, as soon as we knew from Azure that that IP address um, is available, we could push the IP address mapping into FMC and have the traffic start flowing immediately, right? So real quick, show you how to delete the IP addresses. Uh, we show you how to add IP addresses again. So similar to how we use mapping action is equal to add, we're going to use mapping action is equal to remove. I'm going to show you once I remove it, the that change is also immediate and the traffic will stop flowing immediately. Using action is equal to remove. Body has the same two IP addresses we added. I'm going to send that traffic. Uh, and you will see that the ping is still going on. And as soon as I send, the ping will stop. So there you go. So again, within again less than a second. The impact is almost immediate. Um, just to verify, no mappings in production servers now, traffic not being allowed. I re-add the IP addresses, the ping starts again, and then I fetch the mappings again, and this time you'll see those two IP addresses in the mapping in the production server. So that was a very, very quick and simple demo of how dynamic objects can be used, but then your imagination can take you places add IP addresses for use cases for IT ops, DevOps, and SecOps. But thank you so much for your time. That's all I have today.